Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. We're doing a little bit of bowl turning today. We're gonna to start that res or the raffle ticket bowl uh, that we cast on Wednesday. So I'm super excited about this. Um, I have it chucked up on the lathe. So we'll switch to the cannon. And what I did here is I just drilled a hole in the center, kind of flattened off some of the tickets. And uh, we just used the worm screw and it'll hold it on. We'll get a, a tenon on the back and I'll probably, I may do an any, I call them an any spigot. Um, and we'll get it turned up. So if you missed this casting, um, what we're doing here is these are raffle tickets from the SoCal Turners Expo. And a bunch of uh, vendors pitched in, bought a bunch of extra tickets um, just to kind of help make sure, you know, they covered the costs and stuff. Um, there was a little bit lower attendance because they had to move the event to the 4th of July weekend, which was the only weekend that they could pick. Um, so attendance was a little bit lower and some of the vendors pitched in and, and just bought some random, you know, ton, actually a lot of uh, raffle tickets. And we thought it'd be kind of cool to turn something out of them and give it to Kate as a thank you because her and her family put in a ton of work, um, you know, setting that event up. It was a great event. Um, but like, you know, like I said, because of... <laughs> Because of, uh, actually it was partly caused by COVID protocols in California, that's why they moved the date. Um, they had to pick, the only other date possible was the 4th of July weekend and she couldn't get her money back. So um, that's what happened there. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but overall it was a really great event. Everybody had a good time. So um, it went off with a hitch. We just wanted to make sure that she didn't lose money or at least try and help out a little bit more. So. Anyway, that's what we're gonna turn today. Um, we're probably not gonna get through it um, all today. Uh, we'll start turning it, we'll get the back done, um, and then kind of start working on the inside. Um, bare minimum, you know, we're not gonna get it finished uh, completely today. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not even entirely certain how I'm gonna, how, which way I wanna go for the finish and all that stuff. So I'll probably kind of wrap things up on just, just like a regular video. Um, but we'll get through most of the turning. It'll be kind of fun. I mean, that's kind of more of the, you know, we do these crazy experiments. It's kind of fun just to, to see, you know, how does it turn and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're up to today. Uh, overhead cam. Uh, we also got the other blanks. I decided to cast some like handle blanks. Uh, and I'm just going to send these to Kate. Um, she can make something out of them if she wants. Bottle stoppers, handles, whatever. Um, one of the things I, I just kind of thought, like I could make things out of these myself and then give them to her and her family. But I was thinking maybe she might want to actually turn some of these. So that might cover the family. <laughs> so anyway, those turned out good. And let me go grab, I got one other thing here. So we were doing an experiment to kind of see how... I'm trying to make a new Think Pink, that's the name of one of my blanks. I'm trying to make a new one, uh, a new design um, using pearl powders. So we, we tried a couple different uh, pink mica powders here. And uh, for the most part, everybody seemed to like the one on the, the right here uh, a little bit better. It's a little bit more kind of pink, where this one's a little bit more in the red hues. I mean, it's definitely pink, but I think putting them next to, get, next to each other, you know, most people like that, and I like these better. So I turned one up and I wanted to kind of share that with you guys. Hopefully the colors will come through on video, but I think this is a pretty good contender. I mean, I could kind of mess around. I could try and maybe find another mica powder. Um, I looked at eye candy. They have quite a few different um, colors. Nothing really popped out at me. Um, I don't know. So what do you guys think about this one? Really happy with how the shine came out tell you that but I think that'll do um, I think that's not, not gonna be too bad now one thing that I could do with these uh, is I could try and add a little bit of the fluorescent pink dye um, I'd rather not have to rely on this stuff this stuff kind of goes bad quick and I don't want to have to always have that on hand for blanks that I keep in stock that's not a great excuse but if I, if I could stay away from it I might but I might do a, a kind of a just a quick test to see you know, what does this mica powder look like with this um, dye in it? Um, oh, got dye all over my, these bottles. <laughs> dye all over my hands. Um, so I might do a test and maybe not like a full batch of blanks and all that kind of stuff. Just kind of uh, a lot of times I'll test in these, these little um, uh, condiment cups just to kind of, you know, pour something, see what the, the kind of surface looks like and see what, you know, what, what are we looking at here? Is it gonna be a lot different or, or, 
you know, especially when I'm doing um, color matching, I use these and, and you, you end up having to pour a ton of different, you know, samples basically. So I might do that and just kind of see how does it look. I may look into a couple other um, powders. Perlex has a pink that might be a little bit, I was looking for maybe a little bit lighter shade of pink kind of thing. I don't know. It's really hard with mica powders to get, you know, that, that, that soft pink color. Um, I, I don't know of many. Um, I would say that this is probably one of the closest ones uh, to that kind of what you think of pink. So anyway, that's what's going on in the shop here. Um, and one other thing, I actually broke into the mystery box yesterday from Turner's Warehouse. So I'm starting that video that that should I'm hoping to get that thing wrapped up next week, hopefully, and then get a video up kind of quick. So within about a week, maybe two weeks, if I'm if the editing video editing takes a little bit longer than I wanted you know, to to do. But I will say I think you guys are going to have fun with this um, as long as I can get the video edited fairly well. Um, the, the whole process of these mystery boxes that Turner's Warehouse is sending, I think you guys are really going to like the, the kind of format for a video. Um, there were some surprises straight out of the straight out of the box. So it was pretty fun. Anyway, let's see who is here first. Um, I don't my thing. I didn't log in until a little bit later, so I might be missing whoever's first. But according to my thing, Kim was here first. So um, thank you for joining the fun early. And Lelia and Brian's here. Vinny's here. Jeff and Lee. Nice. The coin ninja is here. We and Jean. Ah, uh, you're just in time, Jean. No problem. All right, so I think we can get started. Like I said, it's all chucked up. It's ready to go. And for anybody that's kind of just joining the fun, uh, let me switch camera views. I, I don't really want to mess around with taking, trying to take the thing off the lathe. I was, I was going to try and take the, the whole chuck off, but whatever. You, you guys will get the point. <laughs> what I did was I just basically. Um, on the other side, I just have the worm screw uh, in my easy chuck. And so I just drilled a hole in the, you know, found center on the blank, drilled a hole down in there just with a hand drill, and then, uh, and then just kind of, you know, screwed it on. Um, so we got the wor worm screw. That should work pretty well. Um, one thing to note, if you're going to do that, if you're going to use the worm screw in your chuck this way, because the other way that I have done it in the past is I've kind of flattened the base and then you put a, a you know like a glue block on there I epoxy one on and then you can you know start from this the top of the bowl um, you know and, and kind of get mostly most of the way there um, this is a pretty good way to go because you can put the tenon on flip it and you know get, get get everything shaped on the back it's kind of more the traditional way of doing things but that worm screw this isn't wood right it's it's a hard material a dense hard material so you're going to need to use a much bigger drill bit um, that's that's pretty close to where those threads are um, to get this thing on. Otherwise, it can kind of chip and crack and just not really thread on. So just just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a bad idea to have, you know, like a full set of drill bits on hand, like that has like 64ths, um, you know, uh, measurements on it, um, like that full kind of set of drill bits. Um, it's a good thing to have that way you can kind of sneak up. I ended up ended, I ended up using like the, the larger screw, which may or may not have been smart. I'm not, I'm not sure. I just, I was thinking that might have more power, but, um, the other one might be a, a, a finer thread, which might be easier. I didn't really think about that, but for this one, for the larger threaded, um, you know, screw on that, that worm screw, um, I used, I ended up using a, was it a seven sixteenths drill bit? Hold on a minute. Yeah, seven sixteenths, and that seemed to work pretty well for the larger threads, the larger, you know, the wider diameter threads on that thing. And so I don't know, you know, that's for the easy chuck. I'm not sure if other chucks have different diameters on their the worm screws. Just you'll have to kind of play with it. If you if you and I I tried smaller um, drill bits, tried threading it and it didn't really work. Um, so I just kept on kind of drilling out, you know, with larger drill bits. Um, but for the large one, 7 sixteenths might work. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know about that. I can't remember what I use. I need to keep notes on some of this stuff. Um, I've done this before, and I think I actually used the, the thinner, the smaller um, screw on that. And I honestly, I can't remember. It was one of the weird, like, 30 seconds or 64ths drill bits that I used for it, but it worked really well. 
So just wanted to kind of mention that it's, it's a pretty easy way to get things going. You don't really have to do any weird mounting or add glue blocks or do any of that stuff, but you are going to be adding, you know, either a tenon or a spigot on the bottom of your bowl, which can kind of complicate things a little bit. Um, you know, you got to you know, keep in mind if you go for the any, you got to, you know, make sure that you're not drilling through and making a lampshade out of the bowl, those types of things. So anyway, all right, so let's get started turning. What do you guys think? I'm excited about this. Here we go. So you guys are kind of on the back side here. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna pull up the tailstock, start truing up. It's pretty, it's actually, I got it pretty well centered and that the mold is, you know, was, was fairly round already, but we're gonna true up the outside, bring it around the end. And then I think I might go for, yeah, I think I wanna go for the any on this. Um, the way that I deal with tenons on, on these types of bowls is I actually use the coal jaws um, with my easy uh, easy chuck, easy wood chuck. How much chuck would a wood chuck chuck? So I'll just flip it at the end and then use these coal jaws to, you know, and I'll have to reset everything, but um, to just turn off that tenon. So either way, um, this bowl really isn't that big, so I'm not like, I don't think that it's like that much strain um, going for the opening, you know, holding it on the inside. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. While I'm turning, I'll think what, what, which way I want to go, tenon or, you know, because we're going to lose some, some thickness if I go for a tenon on the outside here. I don't know. What do you guys think? Tenons are a little bit more secure because you're clamping down on the thing. Oh, there I am, talking on the thing. The glitter fly, I know. Yeah, so we, we put the, the uh, raffle tickets in and then we added some red, white, and blue glitter. I thought that would be perfect since the, the event was on 4th of July. So we'll get this tailstock going here, get some back support. And always just be careful, you know, I, there was like kind of tickets sticking out that I had to kind of cut off and flatten so that this thing would kind of sit flat against the, the jaws of the chuck. Um, let me, I'm gonna quickly get just a shot. Uh, I'm gonna do two. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring the, the camera around so you can see how this thing's mounted. I think that will be helpful to some people. And I'm also gonna, just get a little bit of regular video here. Let's see if I can, there we go. I know that I'm gonna have to uh, finish with a regular video on this. So I'm gonna be stopping here and there to get some uh, uh, some footage b-roll stuff they can add so that video isn't just completely standalone and i'll probably rip some footage out so it, it'll probably end up being i don't know we'll have to see but I, i'm kind of thinking that the video that i make is probably going to uh, pro i'll probably end up just doing like a full video ripping stuff out of this live stream too so get footage from wherever i can get it so hold on real quick i'll get the camera in here don't look at the camera. Travel cam. All right, so. And get some lights. The other problem is the lighting on this side is a little bit tougher. Okay. So hopefully you can see, you got jaws on there. But you also, I know there's a light in the way, but you also have in the middle of this thing is a, is a screw basically sticking out that you just, um, you know, you don't even, you don't tap it or do anything like that. That would actually be nice if they had taps for this thread. Um, maybe I might look into that because that would certainly make things a little bit more secure. But you basically just get a, a hole that, that, you know, is, is just a little bit smaller than those threads. And then you just kind of, you know, work it on like, like it was a piece of wood. I just wanted to kind of share that so you guys could see hopefully kind of how this thing's mounted it's i gotta be honest it's it's 
the, the screw chuck or screw drive, worm screw, whatever, <laughs> I can't talk. Um, I like that method of doing it. It's just such a simple um, mounting uh, method. Hopefully this will be a good view. I don't know. That should be pretty good. <clears throat> and what I'm going to use is the, I'm going to just start with this guy, the, the mini finisher. Um, I'm probably going to do a lot with the number one hollower as well. Um, but this one should be able to get this thing trued up. It's a little bit thicker, heavier. Um, but I will say on, on larger pieces that mi the number one hollower having a, a smaller cutter is actually kind of advantageous um, because you're, you're taking off less material because of that tighter radius. So there's a bit less carbide hitting it. And it's it actually kind of cuts a little bit better with the, the smaller cutter. But just to get things going, and you could even use the bigger ones like the, the zero size. Um, if you really want to ho hog off material, you can pull out the giant one. Um, I don't really find that necessary, but it is a little heavier, you know, it's like more solid. So in some cases that could be a good way to go, but this isn't a giant bowl. So I don't think that that's really necessary. All right, so we'll get the dust collector going. Thing going it's a little a little wobbly I'm gonna stop Bigger things like this tend to create more dust. So I'm gonna try and stop and get the dust collector a little bit closer. And get it sucking a little bit more air. And I'm also gonna turn on the stratus on the, in the corner over here. So we got air dust collection and filtration going. Oh, a little too close. There we go. I don't need this light here. Okay, I think that we're good now. I'm gonna get my mask out too. So we got the bottom just about trued up. Cheryl's here. Ah, uh, you're just just in time. You know, one way to turn it is with the dust collector hood. <laughs> we'll get this trued up with my dust collector. So far, everything's turning well. Um, we're not really into anything, any of the tickets or anything, but you know, I think I'm gonna get a. a 
I don't know. You guys might like this. I'm going to I'm going to move the camera back a little bit so you can see some of the the shavings. It's a little bit of a mess, you know. That's why we do this though, right? Kind of change up the views so you can see see what's going on, you know. I wish this camera that I'm using right now was a little bit more uh, wider angle. It's really hard to get a wide shot. So I'm gonna see how does this look. Yeah, you can see what's going on. getting there. Um, I would highly recommend wearing a dust mask um, while you're turning stuff like this because which I may end up kind of pulling it out because no matter what kind of dust collection I, I have set up it just is not going to collect all of the, the dust that's coming off this thing. So just can't really get it close enough, you know, to, to really suck all of the dust away. It's pretty, you know, fine dust. Um, one thing that you can do is maybe slow the speeds down just a little bit. So this is about 700 RPMs. And the other thing that a, a slower, because you can see like this is like chalky dust. That means you're kind of pulverizing it a lot. Um, that's one, you know, a lot of people always ask what speed should I turn things at? And oftentimes I'm kind of like, you know, go kind of as high as you can. But um, a lot of times you'll get kind of nicer shavings and less of that kind of just dusty stuff coming off if you just kind of, you know, lower that speed a little bit.
just about trued up now. Multiple mold with carrier. Um, what do we? I'm not sure what we're talking about. Pen blanks, silicone. And for the carrier, you mean like a rack to put it in the pot? Multiple mold. Still seeing a little bit of shiny. Silicone mold with its own carrier. Is that the Jake Blanks one? Silicone mold. With its own carrier. Are you talking about this one? This one will fit in a five gallon pot only. Um, that's the only one that I know of that has its own carrier as far as I know. Um, I don't know. Mike McEwen. Double duty. Jeez. Stefan, how's it going? We didn't get a picture it in uh, SoCal. Hey, Paul, I'm doing great. Yeah, no problem. We love double duty. The more the merrier. I'm going to put a mask on because I'm just kind of breathing in this dust and I don't like it. So sorry if there's muffled sounds coming from my mouth, but I don't really want to, I don't want to be sneezing for the rest of my life. Okay, so now I got the, the speed up to about 1100, 12. Trying to get a little bit more shape to the bottom here.
but I think I'm gonna leave it kind of, you know, as wide as possible. So it looks like we're trued pretty much everywhere now. Now I just wanna finesse the shape a little bit. I'm getting this pile of shavings right in, right in my eye line. Hey, what's up, Dom? bit more to go. Okay. A little vibration going on, but that's okay. Gotta work at 2 p.m. Oh no! Ah, it's not too hot in here. It's 80, 78. Temperatures are going up a little bit around here, but nothing I can't handle. All right. Woo. So I'm gonna pull out a, a ruler, straight edge, and just kind of see how 
how flat am I? What, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is just get this thing flat and then probably grab a Forstner bit, drill out a little bit of a hole, and then um, come in and we'll get a spigot, um, you know, cut, and then we'll grab it on the inside. I think that's, that'll just look the nicest. We got a little bit of a hump in the middle, but I need to pull the tailstock away anyway. Oh, running into the camera. Let's do some adjusting here. get my dust mask back on. And wipe the dust off my face mask. All right. Okay, that ought to be good, hopefully. Just a little bit concave, which is perfect. So, now the question, I guess my mask is possibly in the way of my mic. Now the question is, I'm gonna turn the collector off. Still got the other one going. Air filter in the background, but. Um, so now I'm just gonna grab a Forstner bit I need to figure out which jaws I'm going to use. I don't need to use the ones that are on there. I need ones a little bit thinner than that. Probably these guys will work. And I always forget the diameter of these things. I think it's an inch and a half, but best to just double check and see how far do we need to go oh about two a little bit over two inches because they're going to expand so i'm going to put this in expansion mode probably go about two and a quarter maybe two and an eighth something like that so I'm going to grab a two inch Forstner bit. I think I got one. That make, that'll make things fairly easy. I can just nibble away some of the extra. Where's my two inch? Hmm. Thought I had a two inch. I have one somewhere. You hate it when you lose your two inch Forstner bit. Actually, I've lost all my Forstner bits, technically. Huh. Where did I put those things? Ah. I have a two inch somewhere. Huh. Is it up here? 
Always good to keep your two inch Forstner bit on hand, guys. Don't be like me. What is this one? Yeah, that's two and a half. That's too much. Hmm. No. Well, I'll just go with what I got. You don't need to use a Forstner bit or anything like that, but it sure would have been nice if I would have had a two inch. I'm missing a bunch of them. What's this one? All right, I got a one and five eighths. I think we're gonna have to go with the one and five eighths, guys. Yeah, I know. I, I don't use Forstner bits that often, so. And I think, I think I put some of them, like all these, like the two inch was like a very specific thing. And I think I put it somewhere with a bunch of other stuff for some task, you know, like it's, I didn't use it that much anyway. So I put it with a bunch of other stuff. It, the other thing is it might actually just be super dull and in a box or something like that um, for sharpening, possibly, I don't know. So we'll just go with one and five eighths. We'll get the majority of it and we can kind of, you know, you're getting a nice flat hole that way with the Forstner bit, um, besides the point, of course. We'll just kind of get that started. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna come back in with my uh, square easy wood tool. Actually, I'll probably come in with the uh, parting tool thing too. And then I like, I like another reason I like these detail tools is you can get the, the angle on that, like the dovetail angle on it. It makes it kind of nice. Okay, so let's get this thing rolling. And turn the dust collector back on. A little bit further. Tad bit further. Okay. What I'm going to do, like I said, I want to go to about two and a, like an eighth or so. I'm looking at like, let's see how wide that is. Yeah, that's about well, maybe two and a quarter. So inside of that line, we want to come. And 
then see, I'm gonna have to get my tail stock out of the way. Pause real quick here. The ruler doesn't have a, it's a TAD line. And if you put everything away, I know I usually do actually. Um, like I said, there's certain things that I might have moved because I don't use it or it had a very specific purpose. And so, of course, I put it in a very specific spot that I forgot about. But other than that, I'm usually pretty good about it. Let's see here. I think I'm going to... Hmm, it's hard to figure out these camera angles sometimes. So this is just the regular square cutter. I'm going to come in first with that. Just to kind of nibble away. much as I can. Where'd my line go? I lost my line. I don't turn a lot of bowls. You guys probably know that, so I'm like a little bit slow here. Where's... Oh yeah, so... Okay, I see it. a sharpie this time. Okay, I think we're pretty close now. Two and an eighth, just about. I'm, I might take a little bit more off. We got, we got a little extra room to go. So I might just take one more quick cut. Okay. 
And then now what I'm going to do is come back with the, the detail tool and get a, a dovetail angle on it. So those jaws will grab real nice. Can you guys see? I'm going to get you guys in just a little bit closer. Kind of trying to get some phone footage as well, so I'm going back and forth between the chat and <laughs> camera mode. Nope, I lost it. Hold on. Jeez. There we go. I never lose my tools, I just never know where they are. Oh, a tad smaller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got the smidgen one. That's that's in the other toolbox. You don't use I know. I don't use like a two inch portion of it that often. So I lost it. Okay, I'm gonna get you guys in a little bit closer for this detailer. How about that? What do you think of that view? So to be honest, it's actually easier for me to come in this way, um, but I don't want to confuse anybody on the video, so I'm going to try and kind of swing around here, but it's kind of an awkward angle for me um, with the camera and everything. I'd actually probably be better off coming in from the opposite side of the lathe to get this, but we'll just try it. Probably a really steep angle, but it ought to be good. All right, so I'm just gonna take a peek at this before I pop it off and mess around with anything. Before we move on, yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, that's not too good. I'm gonna have to touch that up. This time I'm coming in from the other angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lathe in reverse and I'm gonna come in at the opposite way. It's just easier for me from the front of the lathe to, to get in here. It's one of the nice things about having a reversible lathe. A bit of angle on there. Actually, you know what the problem is? I don't think this thing can get in far enough. Hold on a minute. Oh uh, yeah, it's hitting the, the tool. So I'm actually gonna get, there's a couple different ways you can go. There's also the longer, finer detail like the mid-size medium and that that can work but I think I'm just gonna come in with my skew chisel a little bit low there just to get this thing going Good to have lots of different tools. 
There we go. Now it's a nice smooth, nice smooth surface in there. Oh, you lost the combination of the safe. Oh man. Okay, so anyway, we got everything ready for the, the spigot. Let me just double check my measurements here. Yeah, we're plenty good on that, unless I mess something up. So now what I want to do is, um, I'm actually, so I'm not super thrilled about having that that thing in there, so I want to kind of try to get, I don't know, I might, I might come back and, it's the only problem with doing the Forstner bit thing. I think I'm just going to leave it. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but um, I want to smooth this out and get the surfaces as, you know, as good as possible. Make sure everything's um, flat across the side, which it is pretty flat, but just kind of come in and maybe give it a little bit of an indentation. Make it a little bit more concave so that it sits, you know, real nice. And then we'll, we'll get on a little bit of sanding before we flip it around. I also want to kind of work on this outside. It's kind of lumpy and bumpy. That's going in reverse. Like that. Let's get you guys zoomed out a little bit here. All right. shallow resin pour. I don't think I would mess around with resin on, on that. Um, I would probably just fill with like CA or UV resin. Super quick. No fuss. I'm just kind of looking at the surface of this thing. It's actually pretty good. Shaping is reasonably good for what I was kind of going for. I kind of wanted to, I, I liked the shape of that bowl. So that's part of the reason why I used it as a mold. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out, I like to pull out this uh, square radius, uh, negative rake, just to kind of smooth things out. Works good on the outsides of curves or flat. looking at the shaping I was gonna just try and smooth that out but I was looking at the angles and everything and it's we're not gonna have a, 
the, the rim wasn't wider than the than the middle. So I can do two things at once. I can smooth things out with this and bring that material down a little bit. I'm getting on the, the side of this thing to really look at the, the profile. And I think it's pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So one thing I'm gonna do before we move on, I'm gonna pull out that square cutter again. It may be a little bit hard to get you guys in on this angle. But what I wanna do is try and take some of these tickets off. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know, hard, sharp things on the top of this that I, I'd, I'd kind of rather just come in from the side and just cut them off, you know? Let's see if I can get some light in here. I mean, it's just kind of gnarly, you know? So just kind of a little bit for safety and also I'm gonna to have to flatten some of this so I just want to get the outside of these things I already kind of flattened the inside where the chuck is so I just want to kind of take some of that down now before we move on I don't know if I can get the camera in here where it needs to be or not yeah that's pretty good Oh, so many adjustments to make, so little time. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is bring the tailstock support back up just to make sure. More adjustments. Okay, I think we're ready now. Got to get my tool. Ah, it went right in my ear. Shaving in the ear, guys. That sucks. Regular cutters can be a little bit more aggressive, so you you want to kind of you know make sure that you got a you got good leverage, you got good um, support under it. Um, but you can also just use the 
the rounded over one and it's a little bit more forgiving, I guess, in a sense. Problem is it's not as, um, you know, it's not flat, so it tends to bounce around a little bit. It's harder to get a straight cut. But all I wanted to do was just knock down some of the gnarly junk that was on there before we flip it around and start spinning it. Okay, so. Now it's everybody's favorite part, sanding time. Yay. I'm pretty happy with this though overall. Everything turned out pretty good, on the outside at least. Mark's here and David. <laughs> Yay, sanding, I know. So much fun. All right, so I'm gonna start with probably, I'm gonna see if I can get, a, get away with 180 grit to start on this. Um, I might have to drop down to 120 just to kind of, if it's, if it's really not going very fast. So actually another thing that I might do, I always kind of forget about this. Let me turn this thing off. Ah, it's so loud. Um, one thing that's, I don't know if you guys have used one of these, but one of these inertia sanders or even a drill. I actually have a drill that I've never even used. Maybe I'll try that out. If I can get it out of the, the depths of my drawer here. So I got this little side drill. I bought this thing from a uh, Wood Turner's Wonders. I don't know how loud it is. I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah, let's give it a shot. I found on bowls and big things um, these kind of either inertia sanders or, uh, well, I, I've never tried power drills, but I'm guessing it's about the same type of idea. Um, can kind of speed things up and you get pretty good results with the sanding. Um, sometimes I tend to press too hard. Um, but with these things, you got kind of a foam thing, so you're really, it's, you, you would have to really smack into this thing to, you know, to make it, um, to make it really aggressive, let's say. Let me, let me find a, I have some discs that I bought also. So I think I'm going to pass on the, ab, uh, on the Abernet. I have some other, these are Wood Turner's Wonders also. I like Abernet better, but I don't have small discs of it. it Looks like I don't know what's going on with this stuff. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, these green ones that I got too. Maybe. Oh, there's the. grit any of these things are goodness sorry guys I'm just trying to find a sandpaper disc that you know work I think I'm just gonna do there's a reason why I never use those things because I gotta like take every the whole thing apart 
the whole uh, bag because they're like not separate. I have got to clean this drawer out. Oh my god, can't even get it closed anymore. So what I what I typically have done in the past uh, is just cut some Abernet up. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I have Abernet on rolls. Right here, what's going on? Is the chat live? So I just cut like a square. What I need to do is make sure that I'm getting around this doohickey. I'm usually a lot more graceful about this. So I just cut off a little bit and then I come in and just trim around. Uh, make sure that you have a pair of scissors that you do not ever want to use again to cut normal things if you're going to cut sandpaper up. Okay, so let's try this out. See how this drill thing goes. Kind of loud. Sounds like a drill. Hopefully it's not with the Forstner bit. I know, I know. That would be terrible. Let's get this thing in here. I'm trying to think. I think if I spin this in reverse, I can just come on the top and it'll it'll actually collect the dust a lot better. Let's see how that goes. No need to be going very fast. working I might have to drop down to 120 though tell you what though it's it's hard to be on top of this thing much much easier to be on the bottom so I think I think we're gonna switch back to forward drop this thing down a little a little bit the cone I'm gonna zoom you guys back out a little bit so hopefully it'll kind of pull it down from the bottom going in forwards Goodness. Oh, oh, my. That's wonderful. I hate this stand. It weighs like a thousand pounds. The legs are wobbly. Okay, I think we got it. Jeez. This wood turning stuff, it's tough. <laughs> okay. I'm not very elegant with this thing, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the inertia sander works really good too. So I'll, I'll use that for a little bit as well to kind of show you guys. You can just use your hand as well, it just your hand gets kind of tired after a while for sanding something like this for a long time. It'd be nice if I could get my tool rest out of the way too. Somehow.
Yeah, flex. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> the sandpaper doesn't sharpen the scissors? No. Well, it kind of does in like some spots. Not so much in others. It's working pretty good and it gives it a, a pretty even you know sanding overall I still got some tool marks going on here and there that's one of the problems is you get a lot quite a bit of dust coverage so you really need to kind of wipe it off and make sure that you're you're seeing you know tool marks that are left any bumps and stuff um, that are left that you didn't get so just you know every once in a while not a bad idea to you know, give it a good cleaning with the, the air hose and that'll kind of let you see a little bit more of what's kind of going on uh, but real quick I wanted to show you the the inertia sander I, I gotta be honest it's dead quiet <laughs> you know and uh, it works pretty good so I actually took it off the handle because I found that trying to hold this long handle was actually harder for me so just having something in my hand I had more control over this thing make sure that i'm on yeah but i find these things to be pretty pretty darn good and uh they don't make noise which is quite nice let me find a i had a 180 there we go got a 180 grit in here so this works a little different you actually want some more speed this thing but you just kind of you just have to find the right angle to get things going um, but you don't really want a lot of pressure you know I gotta be honest, I, I, I like this better than that drill. It's light, doesn't make a bunch of noise. And you can find these things for pretty cheap, I think. Now, this was a, a, one of the Wood Turner's Wonders ones. So it really wasn't that cheap, but there's pretty cheap ones out there that work perfectly fine I'm sure I don't I've, I've only used this one but I'm really not that good with it because I don't use it a lot you know Just trying to get like the angles and, and the feel of it um, I'm still kind of working on that let's try this again I'm gonna get this thing there we go I don't know. They, they both work pretty well. It's just, you know, having a drill in your hand is a little heavier and a little bit more awkward. But I would say that both of these methods are a lot better than hand sanding, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they call these inertia sanders. So it came with like a, I don't even know what I did with it. It had a handle too, but it just, it was kind of like kind of cumbersome to hold. Where the heck did I put that handle? I loved it so much that I just tossed it somewhere. There it is. So it comes with, you know, even more grip.
if you wanted to, if, that, if this was somehow easier for you. But I found that for me to, for like really good and like fine control, holding it up at the top was, was easier for me. So I just got rid of the handle. Uh-oh, I can't get the handle off now. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go find a hex key. I mean, heck, you could probably just make your own also. Um, just mount a bearing in a piece of wood or whatever, you know? That's all it is. It's just there's a bearing in here that lets this thing spin. And you can buy these little doohickeys all over the place. So, again, you, want, you need speed to get this thing kind of going. And then the right angle. And I'm not a master of this, I don't even barely know what I'm doing because I don't use them that often, but it's all about kind of the angle and the speed as well. So it's usually easier for me on the outsides because it's spinning faster. Um, when you're doing something like the bottom of this bowl, you, you kind of almost want to speed the lathe up even faster so you can get, so you can get the speed going. But I think that's probably pretty good. I need to get the inside of this thing, this spigot here. That's always the hardest part of the, about this stuff. I'm going to have to start with 120 on this because it's much, uh, we got some grooves in there from the Forstner bit. Now I could probably come in and kind of smooth this out a little bit, but it'll be just as easy for me to sand it, I think, at this point. So as you can see, hand sanding, a lot slower, a lot less fun. Hey Jennifer, how's it going? Uh, does it have a magnet? Yeah, it, it, won't, it won't fall out. There's a little magnet in the bottom of there.
All right, I think that might be good with the 120. Pretty good anyway. Uh, you know what, guys? I need to do a little bit of touch-up on that dovetail. I didn't get it the whole way. Got a ledge in there. I'm gonna want a ledge. That's way too low. Okay. What are you guys seeing here? So I'm going to put it on reverse again. I got it. Now we're good. I was like, what's going on with this? It's like there's a barrier in here somewhere. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. We're just having some fun turning this bowl up. A little bit hungry. Kind of forgot to eat lunch. But other than that, you know, we're doing pretty good here. All right, let's see where we're at here. Oh yeah. The spigots are just kind of hard to, that, 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 this would be maybe one good reason to go for uh, the tenon because it's a little bit easier to clean up at the end. But you know, you got to cut off material and bring it down in and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of, you know, which way do you go? It's tough. Um, and then, you know, the glue block makes things a little bit easier, too, because you can use that as the tenon and then just cut it off. So it just depends on which way you want to go. There's lots of different ways to do this. So we did 180. That was 120. 120. I, I need to do a little bit more on the inside of that thing. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do is we're going to wipe off the bowl. Actually, you know, one thing that... So one thing that I might do also is like seal this up because some of these areas where the tickets kind of go in might be a little thin. I'm not feeling any like cracks, but you know, I, I'm just not 100% sure if there, there, there could be some. So 
might not might not be a bad idea to hit it with a little bit of uh, CA glue uh, before we move on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe everything off with some denatured alcohol real quick here. Um, while you're doing this, you know th this edge is kind of mangled, so just you know always be careful if you got areas that aren't you know fully smoothed out. Oh, that looks pretty cool already. Let me get you guys in here. See this thing. I'm going to I'm going to hit it with some some alcohol also. See oh, sorry about that. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm going to get it wet so you can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse. Look at that. That's going to be so neat. Woo! Okay. So, let's... I don't know. I think that this thing's going to be okay. I'm not really seeing any cracks. And the thing is, I may end up putting on a... I don't know what, which way to go for the finish. I don't know. Either way, i got to do some 180 grit in the inside of this spigot. I want to make stuff. I love it. Yeah, red and gambling glitter. Yep. How's it going, Jen? How was your 4th of July? So one thing I'm thinking about doing, or at least like trying out, um, like I had mentioned to Kim, not a bad idea. I like her idea of filling this. Um, but what I'm thinking about is maybe you just getting this up to about 240 grit or so, maybe 400. Uh, I'm trying to kind of skip, you know, some of the sanding on this spigot. And I'm thinking about, uh, you know, I want to fill the, the little pinhole from the um, Forstner bit. And I'm thinking about just laying down a coat of UV resin in there, you know, only sanding up to maybe like 240 grit and just kind of see how does that work? How, how does that look? My feeling is, my, I have a feeling that it's probably going to be probably about as good as if I sanded way higher and tried to just, you know, polish it or something. I think we could just kind of move on from there and not have to worry about this spigot if we just give it a coat. And UV resin is kind of a quickie. Um, you do have to cure it for a little bit, but... You know. Let me take a peek at this thing. I'm going to do a little bit of cross grain or whatever opposite direction sanding here.
All right, so that's 180 grit. I think that's probably going to be good. And then we just need to do 240. So um, I think I'm just going to start with this because I'm tired of hand sanding the, <laughs> the inside of that thing. Um, we'll do 240, get the outside done, and then get this thing going, and then we'll do the UV resin. The mortise. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. It's a mortise. My personal favorite thing I've ever turned. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not worried that it's going to work good. Um, what I'm worried about is, uh, the, the question is, is 240 grit going to be enough? Uh, but UV resin is going to work perfectly fine to fill that hole and do all that stuff. I'm trying to just um, skimp out on, <laughs> on sanding, mostly. But I think it'll work, and you know it'll be in the bottom anyway. So, you know, it's not like it's going to be super visible. Pot, what I what worries me is it may be visible, you know, looking down in. Um, if there's any little scratches left or anything like that that we didn't get. So let's go back to this guy, the inertia sander. Um, I want to wipe that thing off with some alcohol real quick. Oh. One of these days I need to make a Abernet roll dispenser thing. That would be pretty cool. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm going to go with the inertia sander again. you guys over a little bit. Yeah, we uh, we did so the we did the raffle tickets and then we added some red, white and blue glitter in there with it. And then the rest is just clear clear resin. Get this thing sped up a little bit further. All right, I think that may be good enough. I'll give it a kind of a look. Yeah, that's 
it's looking all right. Uh, another thing you can do in between is just give it a little bit of hand sanding um, just to give it kind of a little bit of a different direction, kind of direction change to see, you know, what is the surface actually looking like. You can just kind of put in straight or diagonal, you know, cross scratches. Just see where you're at kind of thing. Frankly, I'd rather just not even mess around with too much hand sanding if you're going to be using the, you know, inertia or a drill. I think you can probably, on most projects, just get away with using those things and move on. But what this does is it'll give you an indication, you know, when we move up to the 400 grit on the next step doing the outside of this bowl, if there are any diagonal lines, straight ones, then we haven't sanded enough. So it does give you a visual cue to let you know that, okay, I can move on or I got to do a little bit more sanding with, with this grit, you know. but it is a little bit annoying on your hand. Uh, one other thing, one other little doohickey that I have here um, that's kind of an interesting one. So they call this a little taco. And that actually is probably gonna be easier. So that, this uses like a five inch disc, which unfortunately I don't, I don't have five inch discs, I have six. Um, somewhere. There's the 240. There's one, 220. 120, 400, 220. But I think a six inch, six inch disc will work just as well. Um, just to save your, your hands a little bit, you can just fold this over the taco just a hook and loop type deal and if you really wanted to you could trim this this gives you a little bit more you know ease on your on your fingers on that grip this is much easier and it should be a little bit more of like an even like you're not going to be putting pressure down on your fingers it's going to be evened out across the taco thing sponge I think I got this at Woodturner's Wonders as well. They got all kinds of good sanding stuff. I think you can get them on Amazon too. I think they're just called sanding tacos. Um, do any of you guys use the um, sanding? What's that stuff called? Sand, sanding sealer on your projects? Because um, I don't really have a lot of experience with that. I think it could be useful on on resin projects. I just really haven't used it much. So let me know. Is that something that I should have already applied? Because I actually have some. I just always kind of forget because I've always just kind of gone into sanding, you know. One thing to keep in mind, if you're just going to be blowing dust off of stuff in your shop, you're going to have your shop covered in dust. 
Um, that's why it's important to have dust collection and dust filters. Um, it'll help out, but you're still probably going to kind of cover everything in the shop. Uh, so you only it only seals wood. It doesn't really do anything. I was thinking it'd be... I mean, it's really like putting lacquer on and then sanding that. And in some cases, I could see that as being an advantage for resin. Some resins are a little bit harder to sand. Um, like lacquer is a hard finish, like a brittle finish. Or cellulose or, you know, like all those things are very similar to like lacquers. And they're a lot of times easier to sand. Sorry, uh, a lot of times they're easier to sand than the resin uh, is just because of they're they're more of a like a crystalline hard structure, you know. So let's see here. We do 240. We haven't done 240 yet on the inside. We did 180. Um, so I'm gonna wipe off the outside of that. Gotta remember where we're at with all these things. 240 on the outside. That's going way too fast. Yeah, I understand how sealer works on wood, but I'm just kind of kind of curious if it if it would be something useful for putting on top of resin or not. Um, all right, so 240 grit on the inside now. I'm just going to call this thing the any. Much easier to remember than mortise. Sanding large projects takes a while. It's the only drawback. And they even make little sanding implements, little holders and things um, to get into like, you know, tight spaces like this. If you got, you know, like arthritis or any, any of those types of things um, might help out or you're holding like kind of a stick or something like that. All right, call that good. Wipe this off and I'm trying to think about the steps. What do I want to do here? So 
think it's probably a smart idea to get the outside also sanded up to the point where I'm kind of done. Um, I, I don't know exactly what, what direction I want to go for the actual finish. Um, you know, I mean, I can, I can sand it up to, you know, whatever, 2,000 grit or something like that, and then buff it. Um, I could just spray lacquer on top. I could apply an epoxy coating to it. Um, I think in this case I could probably use, well, I could apply a UV finish to this thing, actually. Um, but the problem is I don't have a super awesome UV curing rig. This is a little bit big for my little, I don't know. UV resin would work on this for like the entire outside, but like this light system, I, I'm not sure. I guess if we set it up like that, that wouldn't be too bad to get like the outside and, and I think that might cure the, the, the entire outside. That might not be a bad way to go. Like, you know, like this. Huh. I don't know, what do you guys think? Anybody have any thoughts? Um, doing like an epoxy finish, actually I could try the quick finish. Well, I've never even tried that one out yet. I don't know. Well, that's the thing is I don't really like the taking it outside thing. This would work okay, kinda, but unless you're rotating it, that's what I don't like. Like I, I would really want something, you know, where it's spinning so that I can get the UV light hitting it. I don't know. I don't really have time to leave it outside. Plus it's already two o'clock, which means that the sun's already coming at a weird angle. It's just not super convenient to use the, the sun at my shop. A pedicure one? I don't know. No, I don't think... It's a manicure. You put your fingers in there. It works really well. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm just... It's not very big. But I do think it would actually work. I don't know. UV finish would be pretty cool. All right, so let's let's do that. So we need to get this up. I want to go to. We may as well just go to 400 on the outside and on on this, since I'm going to do it anyway on the outside. And then let's let's see what we can do with a UV. You know, we'll just use a Luma a Luma UV. Um, it's it's a little bit of a larger project, kind of, but whatever. Um, and we can get it we can get a coating on it um, I would probably I would recommend I've been getting the best results doing like two coats um, I usually don't use UV that you know the the Aluma UV for things that are like this large I would usually do something like um, just an epoxy finish um, like uh, amazing clearcast plus that's a I really like that one um, I don't know. I'm, let me, I'm just, I'm trying to think here. Either way, we need to do some more sanding. So let's get the 400 done on the outside of this guy. And I'll kind of try and think which way I want to go with this. I usually just find that a top coat usually turns out a little bit better than just me buffing. Or I just kind of give up earlier you know kind of give up on on a on sanding and polishing Okay, I got a 400. I'm like I said, I'm I'm digging this thing 
more than the the drill it's just I it's quiet and light lightweight I'm going to inspect this and see how how it's looking. So again, I put in some diagonal scratches and it looks like I've got a little bit more of that to take out. I can still see those diagonal scratches here and there. We got some more work to do. That's looking a lot better right there. How about the bottom? Yeah, that's looking pretty good too, actually. A few scratches here and there. All right. Okay, we'll wipe that off with denatured alcohol and then we'll get the, the any sanded at 400.
let's see, what was Kim talking about? Hold on. I need two. Oh, two of the lights, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it uh, ro rotating. I'll do a little bit by hand here. I can. What the hell? That piece is not working with me. Need a longer one, I think. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. Wiper down. All right, so let's take a peek and see what we're looking at here. Hopefully the camera doesn't die on me. I didn't think about that. How much time we got left? Ah, 30 minutes left? Oh, we're fine. So it's looking pretty good, guys. I don't know. I'm actually... I never hit it with any CA glue. I don't really think it needs it. I think at this point, I want to fill this thing. So I think I'm actually going to take this off of the lay, or you know, like dismount everything. But I'm going to try and just do it with the chuck only if I can. There we go. And what I'm going to do is basically just paint some UV finish in there, UV resin. I'll try and get you guys in on this here. Yeah, so, all right guys, here, here's the plan. Here's what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna finish this up today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some UV resin on this because I'm absolutely sure that's what I wanna do with this bottom part, with the um, mortise, the innie. I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do for the finish on this yet. So I think we'll just leave that and, and cure it and then we'll come back and, and do, I'll, I'll finish up the rest of the bowl probably in a video. Um, I just, I'm not 100% sure which way I want to go and I don't know that I want to start the, the other side or, or, or worry about the finish today. Um, just because 
I got a few other things that need to be done today and I don't have time to keep my eye on this thing. Um, if we put epoxy on or if I have to like sand and do another coat today. So let's just do this part. I'm gonna get the, the light in. I gotta, I gotta get something to eat too because I'm starving. So let's, let's just do that. Let's do that. I'm not really here either. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just re restart your, your browser. So we're gonna use Illuma UV. It's very simple, I love this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna get a brush, I'm gonna get a little cup to put it in. And I, I think one trick, one big trick to doing this, uh, to put it, to applying a UV finish like this, is you gotta have a good brush, like a high quality artist brush to, 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 to apply this stuff with. Otherwise, it just doesn't really go on very well and it's just kind of, I don't know, that, in my experience, that's been the case for me anyway. All right, so I'm just gonna dump some of this out. I like to just dump it in a cup and then put a cap on the bottle so that I don't spill it or accidentally shine the light in there or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but one of the main things is we want to fill that, that hole um, from, the, from the Forstner bit. I'm actually going to take a little bit of air and just make sure this thing's fully cleaned out. I like to get my brush kind of conditioned a little bit. Just kind of mix it around, get it in the bristles a little bit. And then, can you guys see? Let me drizzle this stuff in. I'm gonna kind of just fill that, that hole first. See if I can get you guys kind of. I don't know down and in a little bit more. All right, so I'm just gonna take some of this, kind of drip it in there. Really, I think you guys should probably be, I gotta think about the camera angle. I'm going to be sticking the brush right where you guys <laughs> are looking. So let me let me switch things around here a little bit. Hold on. It's not that big of a deal, but I figure you may as well get the best view you can. You're going to be watching. Maybe I could do it from this side. Actually, I think we're gonna, okay. Figured it out. Everything was backwards. It wasn't really working. But if I flip, if I'm the backwards one, I think everything should work pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna load some of this stuff up on my brush and just kind of drip it in there. And I think I might actually just start that curing because it was kind of a deep, like a thick thing, you know? In fact, I'm gonna kind of 
swipe around here. Well, I think we can just go for it. We're going to have at it, guys. But see, a, a good quality brush is going to lay down like any finish or what you know, whatever material, just so much better than a junk brush. I really highly recommend. But you got to watch out. You need to make sure that you clean this. You know, clean your brush right away because this is not something that will dissolve with some solvent. You know, once it cures, like if you accidentally hit this brush with the UV light your brush is toast so it's kind of a you know get a decent brush but don't buy the most expensive brush on the planet because if something does happen to it you're going to be out that money but it just makes it so much better when bristles aren't popping out and all this other stuff, you know. Okay, I'm just going to kind of let that sit. I'm looking at this. There's, I can definitely see brush strokes in there. Might even add a little bit more because... It's not really wanting to flatten too much, it doesn't look like. Put a really thin layer on the bottom. Might help to spin it on the lathe. Kind of level things out a little bit, maybe. Um, and then the other thing that you can do with this uh, UV resin is also heat it up a little bit. You just grab like a hair dryer heat gun. That'll thin it. So I think I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go grab that. Kind of heat this up a little bit and hopefully it'll kind of lay down a little bit better for me. I've been really happy with this um, TAC Life heat gun. I got it on Amazon. I don't have a link to it offhand, but um, just search for that on Amazon. I think, I don't know, if you, if you need to get a heat gun, this one's been pretty, pretty darn good. You want to get the light kind of shining on that so that you can see, see the surface. So this heat gun is going to not only thin it out a little bit, but it'll also pop some air bubbles and help it kind of level.
So I'm seeing a bunch of little air bubbles kind of popping on the surface. I want to just... We have unlimited working time. So this will stay liquid until I hit it with a UV light. Let's see if I can get you guys a shot. I don't know. Sometimes it's pretty hard to to get the exact view that you're seeing with your eyes. It has to do with the angle and everything. Uh, Hold on a minute. So it's pretty flat in there. It's, it's, it's looking pretty decent. I'm not really seeing any more air bubbles popping, I don't think. So you can kind of use that reflection of the light to kind of see some of the happenings, you know? <laughs> see what's kind of going on in, in that resin. Gives you a little bit of contrast. Let's see how far we can go. Ooh. How low can you go? So I think that's looking pretty darn good. I got, it looks like I got some on the rim here. It's not a big deal, but I don't really need UV resin on the outside there. But overall, if you just kind of let it sit there for a bit, it should kind of level out and uh, once you're satisfied you know with how it looks then it's just a matter of, of hitting it with the UV light to, to kind of lock in everything so I'm gonna do that let's see where's my light here it is That looks all right. You may have to do a couple coats, you know, but I think we're ready. I'm going to hit it with the UV light. Okay, so that's locked it in. It ain't going anywhere at this point. but it's not fully cured yet, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put this back on the lathe. It's just easiest for me, I think. I, all, I, all I really need to do is just, um, is just put the light over it, but I actually have a, a kind of a setup for the lathe that's gonna make things even easier. I can just set up my light and I'm good to go. So I have a little crate that I just set up right there. This might be the wrong size. I usually do this with things like bottle stoppers. This fits perfectly. I think, well, technically the crate's a little too tall. So I need something, I'm just gonna have it set up like this in front of it so I need something about you know yay tall so probably a box Will it sit? Uh, probably something skinnier than that Ooh, 
Ooh, that's almost there. I'm just going to get a piece of plywood. Okay, I think that's good. Got the camera all twisted around. Hold on. Don't look at the screen. Technical problems. Cords. Probably should have gone to the front of the. Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, got it. We're okay. We're all okay now. There we go. <laughs> Whew. That was exhausting. Alright, so I just got to plug this thing in. And I don't even need to rotate the lathe on in this case. It's, it's just a direct shot. You know? There we go. I could rotate it if I wanted. Spin it, you know. It's already locked in place. The only thing that this would do is make sure that it's it's getting hit, you know, kind of equally, let's say. Probably could have raised that thing up a little bit higher. But I mean, it's it's fine. It's the lights are are, are above the the center thing. So we're going to switch back to the intro view here. Whew. All right, so like I said, I, I don't think I'm going to do a top coat on, on the back of this thing today. Um, I'm just, I'm like, uh, I'm not sure exactly which way I want to go with this. Um, I need to think about advantages disadvantages whether it be worth showing a certain certain way of doing it in the video um i don't know i, I just want to i want a little bit of time to think about it and i really can't get it done it's already 2 30 and uh like i said i got to get some lunch in me i got to get some other things done in the shop today so if i started on that i'm not going to want to finish until the finish is done so i'm just a little bit i think it, it's smart for me to kind of pull out right now um, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that thing sitting um, just to just to get that, you know, um, mortise coating that we put on there. I'm going to leave that under the UV light for 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes even. Just I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to set it kind of walk away. And when I get, you know, a chance, I'm going to turn it off. But I, I would I would leave it with that machine, with that specific light. Um, I would leave that thing running for minimum 15 minutes. Um, up to about 30 and then it should be pretty much done now in that case I could easily just stick that thing outside the problem with our shop is though we're the, the front of the shop faces north so the Sun's coming down here so I got to basically put it almost in the street and I really don't like leaving stuff out where we're at we're not really this is not my house this is not a good neighborhood necessarily it's not terrible but I don't want to leave stuff just sitting outside when I'm not watching it so I usually don't use UV you know, or sunlight to, to cure things because I just don't, I don't like the situation personally. Um, but that, that little UV light works pretty good, um, like I said, but you got to leave it there running for about um, 15 to 30 minutes or so, um, and it should be pretty much fully cured. Um, so what do I, that's a great question. We can do that before we go. Um, simple answer, I just use acetone. Um, I'll show you what I do. Let's see here. I'll be right right back. Where did I put the... Hmm. I have a cup for that somewhere. So you're going to want to... You don't want to put acetone 
in um, just a, like a plastic, you know, Dixie cup, it'll melt it or deform it or do something to it. Um, so you want to use like a, a, you know, a paint mixing cup, like a HDPE paint mixing cup. Where the heck did I put that cup? Huh. I go through so many of these. I have a 10 ounce cup <laughs> that I use for this that always, oh, there it is. I found it. It always seems to walk off. Okay. So uh, here's our cup. I just have a, it's like a ten, eight or 10 ounce cup, um, but this is, you know, e there are other paint mixing cups that are not made of HDPE. Um, you want the ones that are kind of like softer looking and they're generally not gonna be like totally dead clear. Um, that's, that'll be a good indication. Um, typically they're not. Um, we're gonna switch to this view. So at this point, <clears throat> Excuse me. All I do, I got some acetone in here. And I just kind of dab it in that acetone. And like I said, as long as it's wet, you know, um, you're fine. It'll, it'll uh, dissolve. I would probably lean, you could probably do denatured alcohol, I guess, but I don't know. I Acetone seems a little bit more um, a little bit stronger to me. I don't know. You could try it either way. Denatured alcohol might work too. I don't think I've tried it. Um, I just use acetone. But the other thing is make sure that your brush is a brush that can handle uh, solvents like this, you know, like acetones and um, like lacquers. You don't want to be using an oil brush trying to paint on UV resin. That's not going to work so, so hot. And your local uh, like art store should be able to help you with this. But basically, if it can paint lacquer on, you know, then you're fine. It's the same types of solvents. Probably acrylic too, or ones that are like any kind of paint, you know. Those are typically gonna work fine, but you don't wanna be using an oil brush. That's not gonna work so good. So that should be pretty good. And then I just kind of, you know, just squeeze it out a little bit. I also liked, I'm gonna do this off camera, but I like to like just slap the, the bristles harder than that though, on that rag, just to kind of pull out any solvents from the inside. And then at that point, I just let it sit and you're good to go. Uh, Michelle, what's up? I need a big skylight. Yeah, I know. Although at the same time, I don't think we want that because it's uh, then it'll just make the the heat in the summer even worse because we don't, we don't have air conditioning in the summer. We do have a heater um, and that, it, you know, it's not too hard to heat something like this, but like a 4,000 square foot shop to, to air condition. No, thanks. No way. So anyway, guys, yeah, so this pretty fun pretty fun project it's coming along nicely um i'm very happy with the outside the shaping of it um so now all that's left is i got to go in uh, well first thing i want to do is i want to get the outside finished um somehow now one easy way to go with finishes on things like that um is just spray lacquer um that you don't have to apply it at this point um you just need to get it sanded up to you know, maybe four to 800 grit, some, somewhere in there. I usually kind of stop around 400 because you're gonna be applying, you know, a finish. That's gonna fill those scratches and they're gonna disappear. So four to, I don't know, I usually recommend four to 600 grit, something like that. If you're feeling really like you really wanna get it up to a higher grit than that, I would not go above a thousand. Um, you do wanna have some surface texture for that lacquer to kind of grab onto. Um, so that's another reason why I usually don't go very high with these things. I just sand to like four, maybe 600, move on, and then I would spray lacquer it. But the way you want to do that is many thin coats. So like probably like 10 to 12, maybe 15 coats even. 
Um, that's really the way to do it is, is put on a bunch of thin coats, build it up. And then if you need to, um, you know, sand, you know, do a little bit of wet sanding to the finish and then you should be good. And you can even buff it out a little bit. Um, so lacquer is an easy one. You don't have to, you know, get it on while it's on the lathe or do any of that kind of stuff. I don't think I want to do that. I it just, it's, there's, there's other easier ways, quicker ways to get a finish on than that, I think. Um, I don't love the 15 coat thing. You got to put on a, a ton of coats of that because it goes on so thin. Um, so I'll think about what kind of finish I want to put on it. And then, like I said, I'm going to do a video um, t for the rest of this thing. I think it'll just be easier to do, just like package it in a video, get it done and then edit that video. And so you can see, you know, like how, how did it turn out? rather than trying to do like another live stream. We got other things coming up next week and, and in the coming weeks um, to do, you know, on the live stream that we want to do the projects and, and finish them that week. So anyway. Yeah, vinegar, I've heard people say that. I would, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think that you're better off with solvents personally. I, that's just, I, I trust solvents better, I guess. I don't know, vinegar, I don't know why I don't, like that well i'll tell you what i don't like the smell of vinegar so i'm not going to use vinegar personally but um yeah i guess it could work i don't know i haven't tried it but if it works then then give it a shot if you got some vinegar otherwise i would recommend for most things most most manufacturers recommend like a, a acetone or, or denatured alcohol uh, to clean up you know epoxies and things like that uh, this was the t-shirt from SoCal Turner's Expo. I don't know if they're selling any extras that they have, um, but this was, I think I got a thing, yeah. This was the, the Turner's Expo for this year, the shirt. So, anyway, let's see, is there any other? Um, Bailey was asking, can you warm it? Um, are you talking about UV resin? Is that, I'm guessing, because I actually did. I used the heat gun. You could warm it up beforehand as well if you wanted. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any advantage to doing it that way. But yeah, you can warm it up and, and cool it down a little bit. Um, you know, use like a double boiler system or, you know what I've found is like the, the, um, the little heat pads for like lizard tanks, aquarium things. Um, those work really well for heating up a bottle of resin and you don't need like a hot pot or you know water around anywhere um, it'll just kind of heat it up so that's that's another thing to look at probably do a video on that down the road uh, yeah it was a great expo I had a great time um, and I'm gonna be doing a video tomorrow is coming out um, just kind of a little bit of a wrap-up to kind of show a couple things and explain you know what happened I didn't get a whole lot of video footage I was kind of at the booth um, and talking to people and, and like busy and I kind of I, I don't know it was the first live event back and I kind of just you know dropped the ball a little bit but I did get some video footage explained what was going on and, and showed some stuff I got some clips of different things that happened there so uh, if you want to see the highlights um, check out that video tomorrow and I think that's about it and like I said I'm also working on the uh, mystery box from Turner's Warehouse. I already broke into that and actually that's another thing that I need to do today is continue vi that video. Um, it's going to be fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it because I'm having a blast with it. Um, it, it I can tell that uh, Turner's Warehouse had fun. So it's going to be like one of those down the line type things. The biggest problem with this project is or, or these mystery boxes is it's kind of hard, like nobody's gonna be looking for this. So it's kind of hard to do like a thumbnail and get people to watch. So I'm gonna definitely be relying on you guys to, to make sure you check out that video, those, those mystery box videos when they come out. Cause it's kind of hard to not tell people what you're actually doing, you know, it's, it's a mystery and that's kind of half the fun with it. So anyway, let's see here. I think that's about it guys, I think. So the next live stream for anybody that's new is Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to do some resin casting. So next week we're going to do the, uh, the box of stuff from Jean. She sent in some golf tees, some, I think it was like match sticks that are, that are colored, as well as some yarn that's kind of cool. So we're going to play with that. That was next on the list. So it should be pretty fun. And then we'll, you know, figure out whatever we make with those. We'll turn something on next Saturday's stream and uh so many things going on so many things coming up so anyway guys i hope you have a wonderful rest of your your weekend uh rest of the day today and i will see you guys all on the next live stream thanks for joining the fun today